Hey guys, hope everything's going well. You guys know that drill. Smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, comment down below. Follow me on Instagram at AIH underscore sports. Follow me on my finance channel at AIH Finance. I did post that video. And it's been a long time since I've done a video there. So check it out. AIH Finance on YouTube. Okay, so I wanted to touch base. Oh yeah, first of all, shout out to Sports Card Radio for actually giving me a shout out during their live stream yesterday. That was crazy. That was such a fun uh, live stream to watch. I had some errands yesterday. So I was in the grocery store. I was at Whole Foods. I had to get out of the house at that time. Unfortunately, I had to take care of a few things. So yeah, while I was uh, shopping, I was just listening to them. So it was nice. And then in the car, I then heard them make a shout out to me like, wow. Oh, man. Holy crap. You will just see us like it's winning a championship. We might fall over. over. We got champagne. We could like, we might have like, to do like that. Like, might, oh, my oh, my God. God. That'd be great. We're definitely cracking the ball liquors, uh, liquor back there. Yeah, that happens. It's, it's a safe one. Walter <laughs> Novak, Sports Card Radio, Dan the Card Man, Sports Card Dad, Junk Wax Investor, and Chris Sewell. Sewell are all I watch. You guys do an awesome job. Keep yeah. it up. I would agree. I watch these guys. I also watch the AIA Sports AIA guy. Sports, great. I love his like demeanor and his delivery. Fantastic. I think it's just fantastic. It's very uh, authentic and, and very raw. And I love his channel uh, for that. And I, I hope he keeps posting to it. This is an invitation to AIA Sports. Continue your finance channel, and I'll bring you on my finance channel um, in front of 100,000 subscribers, and we'll blow your channel up. But you got to keep posting, and, and I'll bring you on. Uh, what's We got another one. Minus. I mean, bye. Like over 16,000 people watched it. So thanks again. That's amazing. So um, I want to talk today. Uh, regarding how I don't trust the media and it also applies to sports cards as well just in general I if they're pushing one thing or the other and emphasizing it I become suspicious right you have to remember that there's corporate interests and once again there's nothing wrong with it but if you are getting paid by people right your agenda is obviously to follow the line of the advertisers or b try to get the most clicks out there i believe that you need to do your own research and i was watching a good video uh, from this channel called marvelous packs the other day so uh, make sure to check his channel out i think we think uh, quite alike or more we have more in common than i would say some of these other channels out there but he did make some interesting points so make sure to check check his channel out he does follow a lot of comic and he talks about sports cards as well from my understanding now regarding uh the media i noticed that if they're on one side of the trade or if they're emphasizing one thing i don't want to take them at value they could be right at times but especially in terms of speculating investing right this is more uh, regarding investing so i'm going to show you uh some or i'll read you some of the headlines that i saw online just doing a google search typing in sports card bubble and it's quite interesting if you look at the different time frames so let me get my uh, laptop here and let's look at this uh, 2021, this is, I've talked about this article. And what I've stated before is I said that Ken Golden was very smart for selling close to the top of the market. He sold his company to Collector's Universe while things went crazy. But what I saw in the CNN article was quite interesting. And the article name, first of all, is there's never been a time like this. Wall Street is piling into trading cards as prices soar. So first of all, that is a red flag when Wall Street, when they say Wall Street's getting in. Because from what I read, Wall Street wants to make the money and they want to leave 
when they're selling to the suckers, right? Based on how I've looked at the markets for a while. And I want to go to this one quote. Okay, so Golden told CNN Business. I don't know what he said made in the article, but I'm just looking at the actual quotes that made in the article. There's never been a time like this in the history of the business, Golden told CNN Business. I would bet that for every person who wanted a Michael Jordan rookie card in 2019, there's 100 now. So the supply was increasing while the Jordan card price was going insanely high. So you have to look at that. You have to ask yourself the question, why is the price going higher and the supply is hitting the market? Now, remember, Ken Golden disclosed that he's selling Jordan strategically. He's not going to jam the whole market with the supply. So in essence, you could say it's a pop control. Okay, so let's go through that um, CNN article. It says, industry insiders acknowledge that their business may be benefiting from broader euphoria, but they push back on the idea that the boom in demand is generating a price bubble. This is now part of our uh, culture, Golden said. I wouldn't go anywhere near the word bubble. Okay. Fast forward to August, uh, right now, 2022. What has happened to especially the Jordan cards, right? They're down, what, 60, 70%. And right now, you could just see a bunch of things. Number one, there's more negativity uh, right now. or There's more negativity in the space. There are less content creators doing videos. For instance, my channel, when I was a contrarian in 2021, February and March, I was getting maybe 100 views. Sometimes I could get some views if I talked about uh, some of the uh, hot topics at the time. But at the same time, I wasn't getting traction. I was starting out my channel. And now, while the market's tanking, or not tanking, while the market has gone down, my views have been going up. So that's just one thing to note. But the media at the time had Ken Golden on. Right, because Golden was selling all these record prices, or he's making all these records on his auction site. So obviously he'd get interviewed. But he made that interesting comment. This is what was being presented all over the media from what I remember. I think this article made it the rounds. They were saying that, hey, Wall Street's getting in, that's good news. Ken Golden is saying this is nowhere near a bubble. This is actually in the media, right? This is why I don't trust the media because the media's job, once again, is to get the most clicks and they're going to get someone, in my opinion, who has a biased perspective because he has an auction site. He's not going to be like, hey, uh, the markets went up 10x or whatever it, it happened with the Jordan cards. It went up, yeah, 10x for some of these cards. Maybe you should uh, be cautious and head to another part of the market. At that time, people should have been buying like those weird cards that were pumped up, in my opinion. But I'm going to go to another um, part of the media. And I'm not picking on these guys, right? But it's a sports card nonsense. And I believe they're with uh, the Ringer. Is that correct? I think that is part of the media. And uh, what was quite interesting... Um, this was in February of 2021, and they had, um, this is what it says on their Apple podcast preview, and I believe on their YouTube channel, I believe they have, and uh, Mike and Jesse talk about why the sports card market isn't a bubble. That's what it says in the uh, headline there, right? So I, I forget who's that guy who used to work on ESPN. I think he's the one that created the ringer, so you could say this is part of the media, right? So... Once again, I, I don't think they're malicious in saying that. I'm just saying that this, this is the type of stuff that I saw. There was one article, though, that I did see, uh, I think on Yahoo, which did warn about it. There may have been a few others. But I remember that CNN article, that was being promoted like crazy. 
and also the fact that Wall Street was getting in. And I may discuss more about that. So this is just quite interesting where you have a lot of the media, they just want, in my opinion, who are, people who are experts like Golden, but you could say that there's a conflict of interest. And um, there is this one other article, I think on Slate in 2010. Let me take a look at this. Yes. So in March of 2010, they recapped the greatest baseball card bubble. And they're talking about the 1980s and what happened in the 1990s. And um, you could see all over Google, you're talking about just uh, sports card investing, speculating, bubbles, etc. There were people saying that, hey, look, um, we probably will never see uh, another bubble like this. We're not going to see another run up like this in our lifetime. And look what happened during the pandemic. You saw cards that were 100 bucks went to $3,000. That's insane. That usually doesn't happen unless you're like a Tom Brady type of guy. And um, yeah, they're, they're talking about it. And you didn't see talk about, hey, maybe this is a time to get in. Right? Because there's things about, hey, the greatest sports card bubble. They're talking about 2010. I would say the greatest sports card bubble was 2021 i don't think we're gonna see some run-up like that again in our lifetime because you had a pandemic once in a century pandemic hopefully that's the last but you had that going on and stimulus checks printing like crazy now we will have run-ups in my opinion but not to that extent so whenever you see the media just on one side of the boat you may think to yourself, hey, do I want to take the opposite side of the trade? And now it doesn't mean that you'll make money. It just means that, hey, take a look. Maybe there could be opportunities. And that the media, you can't solely bet against the media uh, when they're on one side of the trade. You need to look at other factors as well. You could look at uh, monetary policy. You can see, okay, are they pumping up the market? that way with the Federal Reserve. And they were actually 2009, 2010. What quantitative easing? Right? I remember looking at some of these prices of Sandy Colfax cards. I think one of his rookies, PS high grade, was ten thousand dollars and then a decade later it sold for a hundred thousand dollars. What is it right now? Probably a lot more. But anyways, that's something to note. I don't trust the media when they're on one side of the boat. I want to take the opposite side. Just like when everything was coming crashing down, like people are trashing Bitcoin like crazy. I just bought a little Bitcoin uh, when, you know, I think Vegas Dave was saying like, oh, everything's going to be tanking. It's dumb money. It's buying right now. This and that. Like, okay, okay. I'm probably going to do the opposite of what you're doing. But it is what it is. Um, now, that being said, let me know what you think. Remember to smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Comment down below, guys. Thank you. Bye.